Uh, Representative Strauss has represented the, the 10th Bristol District in the legislature since his election in 1992. Uh, chairman Strauss is the House Chairman of the Joint Committee on Transportation. Prior to his election um, as a representative, um, uh, Mr. Strauss served as an assistant district attorney in Bristol County for six years. He received his bachelor's degree from Middlebury College, his law degree from Georgetown University, and he also holds a master's um, in public administration from the Harvard Kennedy School. Uh, this is clearly a man who uh, has a great deal of uh, smarts and uh, perspective. And we are so pleased to have him with us um, and to be able to acknowledge him uh, for his real leadership in helping bring about a solution to this key problem right now. So if uh, Chairman Strauss could come up here, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you and good morning. I'm, I'm sorry, I think I was supposed to be earlier in the program. I apologize for that. Uh, I appreciate the remarks in the introduction. I, I may have certain kinds of smarts, but not, not necessarily in others. Uh, but um, I, I'll just say a few things. I don't know if the program permits questions. I'm Absolutely. Good, okay. Uh, so I'll speak uh, what is in my mind briefly and, uh, and then be happy to take questions given some of the, the current issues surrounding us now. The uh, unmet need for transportation uh, spending uh, that needs to occur and that has not been occurring uh, over the last uh, couple of decades outside obviously some core uh, projects uh, in Massachusetts uh, is, is clear to me. So, the question is, how do we get the resources, and even uh, however you v view the politics of it, how do we accomplish that in uh, dealing with a, a legislative body and, and a governor? Uh, I have to say, you know, standing here uh, this day, uh, as we dissect where we are, and we're in the middle of the legislative process, a couple of days ago the House uh, took what used to be viewed as uh, 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 quite an effort in uh, approving increased taxes of a half a billion dollars. Uh, clearly, there are some who think that that's uh, cheap uh, and that somehow it lacks courage. Uh, people who, who are willing to stand up to do that lack courage. I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, I would just direct people, not that I endorse in any way particular parts of the media, but I think if today you read Scott Lehigh's column in The Globe, uh, you have a really accurate read as to uh, how uh, the debate has proven difficult. Uh, Two billion dollars is just not what the people of Massachusetts will accept. It's not what they want. Uh, and when we talk about transportation, I happen to have a philosophical view that the income tax is about the worst place you could think to look to to fund transportation. Think about it. We're a state that relies on as a significant part of the economy, not the high tech, not the new, not the, uh, the things, many of the things we look forward to, but in our tourist industry and people coming to Massachusetts, coming to the Cape, coming to this city, uh, coming to Western Mass, all kinds of places, we rely on people coming here and spending their money who don't live here. What does the income tax do? It takes money as a tax issue, as a, as a taxing method, from people who do live here as residents. Part of the idea of transportation funding to me is, is the user fee concept. My preference, although we do have, and I'm happy to speak about it, my preference is that we look to, uh, in transportation financing, uh, the people who use or benefit from the system in different ways. When you look at the income tax, as I'm disappointed the governor did, uh, what you're doing is saying, we're not going to look to the people who come and use our roads and use our transportation system and use our airports uh, as part of the solution to the mix. So from a philosophical standpoint, I frankly think he just didn't get it. It's just not the way to do it. I'm not saying that about the other issues that he was advocating or is advocating for on the other programs, education, uh, the other early, early childhood education. That, that's a different story. 
but to the extent he was looking to finance something like a billion dollars in transportation, his approach didn't make sense. And certainly that's what I hear uh, from the people uh, I represent. So then you get to the issue of what's the right number. I don't need to, to go into that. I want to give you a sense, at least from the House of Representatives perspective, what happens when you try and raise taxes, uh, no matter the number. We have 160 members. We started the debate earlier this week with approximately 30 members of the Republican Party who were going to vote no, no matter what it said. Going to vote no, no matter what it said. That's different than uh, how that party is viewing transportation issues in other parts of the country, in other states. But that's the way it is in Massachusetts today. Uh, so now you're down to 130 representatives. Then you have 10 to 15 members of the Democratic Party who similarly will vote no on a tax issue no matter what it says. So at that point, you have the prospect of 115 to 120 members of the legislature of the House who are at least persuadable, willing to look at the subject. We got 101 members out of that group of 115, 120 persuadables to, who are, would consider voting for taxes who said, yeah, I'll, I'll stand up and vote for a half a billion in taxes. The governor on a local station in my region of the state today uh, went on the air and said, that's meaningless. I think he's wrong. That's an incredible vote for anybody to raise taxes. I have no problem discussing whether it's a sufficient number, whether it's the right number, whether it's targeted correctly. But uh, to go around and, and uh, suggest that the House uh, did something evil by trying to raise taxes and direct it to transportation, I don't think has helped the discussion. I really don't. Uh, so uh, we will continue to work with him. Uh, as I said in the floor of the, uh, of the House, uh, and it's interesting, the governor, I guess, uh, meant it when he said it, when he spoke to about 20 members of the, of the House Monday morning before the debate started and urged them to vote no to kill the bill, uh, he said, you have to vote no because then we can start to compromise. That's a curious way to approach uh, any legislative body. Uh, which is to advocate that a bill die so that you find yourself, believe that you'll be in a bargaining position. And, uh, and maybe he's under the illusion that he has successfully killed the proposal. I don't know. We're going to continue to try and find the solution here. Uh, I will say that uh, when I look back at some of the comments from the administration with regard to financing the transportation, only three years ago, they were talking about different innovative approaches for the major capital projects, things like value capture, uh, financing districts that we'd look to to help support repayment of capital projects. Those disappeared from the actual bill that the governor filed. We put some of them back in in the House. We'll continue to work with the Senate. We'll continue to work with the governor. I don't want to take uh, too much time, so I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, I wanted to... In um, yeah. Hi, my name is Jim Re It was working. It was working, yeah. Okay, my name is Jim Repass. I'm chairman of National Quarters Initiative. Uh, not too long ago, we had a conference about value capture as a way of rev raising revenue. Uh, has that car discussion come up. You have a few uh, House reps who are we put knowledgeable it back about in, it. Yeah. Uh, we put it back in the House bill that went over the Senate, good. Uh, requesting that, uh, and, and at least, and, and I'd be curious, our concept of value capture can occur in, in a different ways. One obvious one is to the extent that the Commonwealth invests money to create in a tran transportation project uh, what we feel very, fairly certain will be a economic boon. Obvious one historically is 128. Right. Uh, so to the extent you do that, and I'm happy to have it applied to the project I'm locally associated with, South Coast Rail, to the extent you create added, not existing one, from existing ones, but added tax revenues, 
I think it's fair that the taxpayers who invest in different parts of the state can think of getting repayment for that. So I make that clear to the municipal officials I talk to. That in part means uh, that to the extent they see growth in their local property taxes because the taxpayers of the commonwealth from other parts of the state have helped create this uh, economic activity by creating some new road or bridge or rail connection, whether it's subway or commuter rail, uh, part of that growth should be part of the repayment option. The administration said, we're not looking at that. And I think for the major capital projects, and I see the mayor is here, and, and I think Green Line has to be part of this discussion, uh, to, uh, uh, to say that these will be purely taxpayer-funded projects from the state or, uh, or even the federal government uh, is, is going to be a difficult lift. And so something like value capture, I think, has to be part of the discussion. You say the, the governor is not willing to discuss that? Uh, it's not in his bill. So, uh, and I know they debated it, so I think when you file a bill, that's the time to put it in discussion. All right, thanks very much. Sure. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hi. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm glad, Robert Cohen, I'm glad to hear what you, a statement you made a little while ago saying that the users of the system should be paying the, the cost. So my question to you then is a VMT, vehicle mileage tax. The gas tax model in both nominal and real terms is a dying model since people are A, driving more, and B, with more and more fuel-efficient cars and hybrids and what have you, are buying less and less gas. So in, in real terms, with inflation going up and less um, gas being purchased, relying upon the gas tax model is, in the not-too-distant future, a dying model. So what's your take on, actually, a VMT? Great question. Uh, I, different people clearly have different views about the decline or flatness, whatever, of the gas tax. Some look to five years, some look to 10. Either way, we better plan for uh, that being a smaller component of, of transportation financing. Uh, I think, uh, and it's one of the things that um, uh, uh, in an amendment that we did in, add in the House Monday night, uh, is a direction that uh, we have to prepare for uh, electronic tolling uh, as, as a serious option. Um, conceivably, and it, it may not be popular ultimately, but uh, if it's a replacement for the gas tax, I think the public will come to accept it. You're going to have to look uh, beyond the corridor of the, the pike and, and the bridge. Uh, and that adds some, some balance or equity in how we do it. VMT, I'm afraid, uh, creates some problems in terms of uh, the people who would then come forward and start asking for exemptions. What about the times of the year I'm not in the state and things like that. Uh, and, and so I think that's a harder one uh, to deal with. It, it also has similar privacy issues. I'm confident they can be addressed as well. Uh, but I think uh, more the electronic tolling model, whether it's transponders or better readable plates, and ours in Massachusetts really are pretty bad. Uh, because we don't make people renew the plates. I, I, I think that is ultimately the option. And when people hear that it's designed as a replacement for the gas tax, I think you'll have greater public acceptance. I'm guessing that that's the, um, the hook. So, thank you. Well, Representative, I, I hate to uh, cut off the questions, but we have been joined by your by your colleague, uh, Senator McGee, uh, the Senate Chair of uh, the Joint Transportation Committee. So, Senator McGee, if you would favor us with a few remarks, we'd love to have it. Geez, I was standing back there seeing this big, big as life, Bill Strauss on the TV back there. I said, wow. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Um, glad to be here this morning. Uh, just, uh, I think Bill outlined a little bit what's going on, and I just had a chance to speak down at the uh, uh, Greater Boston Labor Council, and uh, I asked them if they knew that transportation was an issue we're facing right now, and they, they seem to be aware of that. So, um, but I think, 
I think as we you know go through the cloud of all of the different plans and discussions and uh, uh, and, and I know Bill has been able to do this over the last two and a half years and uh, people in this room and and probably people around the state have talked about is 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 the focus and where should be the focus on what is the need in transportation how do we define the need and how do we get to the place to solve the problems we face in transportation so it's not based on one plan or our plan or their plan it's about how do we move the commonwealth forward recognizing the need and recognizing the huge impact on our economy by not addressing this and i think we've made substantial progress because if you talked to uh, bill or i or anyone really two or three years ago and said we're going to be at the table debating uh, um, making investments in transportation for the future, I think people would have been hard pressed to say that would be making that happen at that point. So we're definitely making progress. progress. But I think we need to continue to talk about the need. And, I, and I'm not talking about the legislature or the administration. I think more importantly, we need to continue to talk about that need and the impact of that need to our constituents and the people we represent and the people in our communities that we live in and the, uh, the results of not addressing that need to our economy. In today's globe, uh, an analysis of the House plan, there was uh, one piece that I thought really jumped out that we can all embrace, is every dollar that you spend on transportation, you get a dollar fifty back. So 50 cents on the dollar we, we get returned on our investment in transportation. So we need to continue to talk about those things, recognizing the challenges we face and the challenges that our constituents face every day with, with their budgets, with uh, the economy as it's been, even though we're moving in the right direction. Uh, but just as importantly, recognize that not to make those kind of investments and to move in a direction that gets us to the point of meeting the real need of uh, the infrastructure in this state uh, and, and understanding that we can see it locally, uh, but the reality is that those local issues down to a small piece are, endemi are, are identified across the Commonwealth. Uh, and each project that you talk about that's 10 million or 5 million or 8 million or 15 million in terms of good repair, uh, you, can, you can add that dozens and dozens and dozens of places around the Commonwealth uh, in the real need. And I was, I was at a business on Route 1 last night in Saugus uh, uh, and I, that I go to a restaurant I go to all the time. And, uh, uh, I asked, uh, I, I know the owner, and we were in there, uh, my son had a uh, swimming banquet there, which um, one of the places that a lot of those groups go to. And I said to him, I said, you know, we've, we've, we've eroded our gas tax nine cents since 1991. Do you, think, do you think that trying to raise nine cents on the gas tax is a crazy idea under the, you know, again, people go to his business, they drive there every day. And I really didn't know what his response would be, and he said, he said, you know, that's, he said, I don't see that as a big deal or a big problem or a big, uh, uh, he said, we really need to address transportation. And let me tell you about what I see as a bigger problem. Uh, have you got a chance to look at the Walnut Street Bridge, which is about a half a mile up from his restaurant, which I'm very familiar with? He said, have you, been under, have you gone under that? It's the overpass on Route 1, which is uh, hundreds of thousands of cars a day go follow along Route 1. He says, have you seen how much, how bad a shape that bridge is in? He said, you know, the real... Uh, problem that we face is if we don't address our infrastructure needs and we don't address that bridge in particular for me, I can't tell you the cost to my business or the businesses on Route 1. I couldn't calculate uh, the devastating cost it would be if that bridge uh, was shut down because it was uh, not, you couldn't drive over it. Uh, and, and it's interesting because it's a bridge that I'm very familiar with because it was taken off the tip. The replacement of that bridge was taken to off the tip in 05, and I've been pushing for it ever since. It's still not been replaced. Uh, it was supposed to be completed in conjunction with a complete restructuring of Route 29, which is a small road between, that runs between Linfield and Lynn, goes through Saugus. So they did all of the work on both sides of the road, but because of the downturn in 0102, it's off the tip, and, and, and it and dozens and dozens of other projects that can't make it onto the tip. And so that wasn't completed, so I'm very familiar with it. And the, the reality of what's happening now on that ra roadway, which I've noticed recently, is that the road that was completed in 2002 needs to be refixed and refinished because it's been so many years, and now it needs to be reinvested in before we've <laughs> completed the bridge that was part of that project in the first place. Now, that's one small little piece of the Commonwealth's problem, but it's a, it's a great piece to understand the challenge the Commonwealth faces together. So uh, I think we need to continue to have uh, positive, reasonable discussions about how we move this agenda forward today and for tomorrow. And it's not just about talking about transportation today, because we can't solve problems that were created over 22 years in one year. 
We can't say, that's it, we solved the problem, on to the next thing. Transportation, uh, that is the key to our economy, needs to be a part of the discussion every year to make sure that the dollars we do invest and the increased revenue we do have are being spent properly, that we're doing it the right way, that we continue to build the trust with the public so that they understand we're not just asking for your money, we're asking for your money to make sure we invest on your behalf to make your lives better and to create opportunities for economic growth. That's our challenge, but it's a challenge not only of elected officials, it's a ch challenge for all of us in the Commonwealth. So. Um, uh, I think we, we've definitely made great progress, but we, we need to continue to go further. And, and, uh, and I'm not just talking about what plan will be approved this year. I'm talking about we need to go further next year and the year after in terms of addressing what is the number one issue we face when we try and grow our economy. So I thank you all for being here. I look forward to working with Bill. We've had a great relationship. I know we'll continue on this. We have a lot of, a lot of other things in front of the committee that are just as impactful as uh, the bill we're facing this week together, and I know that we're going to continue to move together to try and solve these problems together, and that means working with uh, both uh, my colleagues in the House and the administration, but more importantly, business leaders and, and citizens around the Commonwealth. So thank you. I'd be happy to answer a couple of questions if you want. Thank you. see a few questions here for the senator and then I thought we could just very quickly go to our panel with your your final advice on what should happen next and then I'd like uh, Paul to close this out so a few questions for Senator McGee uh, right here a microphone right behind you thank you um, everyone of course is talking about numbers these days and um, I'm curious if you could give us some insight into how the House and Senate jointly came out with their $500 million package, given the recommendations from the 2007 <coughs> finance report, which called for roughly a billion dollars a year, and given the mass taxpayers, not exactly the most liberal group asking, saying that a minimum of 800 was needed. I was wondering what the rationale was for the $500 number. That's a, that's a great question. And um, I think what, what we've put in place is a framework. And, and you also have to, I think, uh, based on, on uh, what you can get done, so what can you get done? And what can you build enough support for? And I've said this all along. What, people ask me all the time, well, what's, what are you, you going to do for revenue? And what's, what's the number? And what's the tax you're going to raise? And how are you going to get there? And I've, and I've said it, and I'm sure Bill's heard it, uh, many times. It's, it's what we can build 81 members in the House and 21 members in the Senate to approve and get to the governor and hopefully get passed. So uh, we're, we're dealing with a number that is, I believe, real, but we're also dealing with something, an ability to move the agenda forward. So that's where the framework came into place. The House had a chance to debate that, talk about the numbers that are out there. We'll have that opportunity as well. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't think there was any a clear-cut answer as to what the real number would be. It was just as a question on how do we move the agenda forward, and that, that discussion continues. And we'll be, we'll be dealing with that today and tomorrow in the Senate. Um, and uh, we'll have, I think, amendments due by 5 o'clock, and we'll have a chance to debate that question, I think, <laughs> as well as we move forward on the Senate side. All right. One more question for Senator McGee. Uh, back here, Tom. Rick? Uh, hi. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Rich Parr. I'm the research director for the Massing Polling Group. Uh, before that, I worked at a better city, so I was involved actually with uh, Tony and AECOM on this other report. But um, I just want to thank Representative Strauss and Senator McGee for being here and for, be for being leaders on this. Um, Mass Inc. Uh, conducted a couple of different opinion polls in the past couple of years about this very issue of transportation finance, and we found surprising support uh, for the idea of investing in transportation. Uh, but people are also concerned. You know, we asked them if they'd be willing to spend money to create a sustainable funding stream for transportation. And they were. Uh, you know, 50 percent, uh, excuse me, 60 percent or so said that they'd be willing to spend $50 more a year. Uh, the number goes down, obviously, as you ask more, as, as you would expect. Um, but the concern that we heard was people want to make sure that the money is well spent and that it goes to the projects that they think it's going to be spent on. And so I would say that uh, if there's a way forward in your discussions that uh, finding ways that you can commit the commit money to transportation and commit that uh, money to specific projects is uh, 
would be a, a way forward for you. So thank you. Thank you.